Tessa Reid Majors was born on May 11, 2001 in Charlottesville, a city with almost 50,000 inhabitants located in the state of Virginia in the United States. Tess, as she was better known, was the eldest daughter of Christy and Inman Majors. According to people close to the family, the girl's parents raised her with a lot of love and care and always supported her in her decisions. Tess was described as an extroverted funny girl who would make friends easily. In the year 2019, she graduated from St. Anne's Belfield School and later began studies at Barnard College, a private all-female school located in Manhattan, New York. Tess divided her time between studying and playing bass in the band she and some friends had called Patient Zero. At the time of the events, they had just released an album and had shows scheduled in Charlottesville. In addition to being in the band, she was also the leader of a literature club during high school and used to volunteer for political campaigns at animal shelters. Tess had the dream of one day becoming a journalist. After doing an internship at a local newspaper and falling in love with the journalistic environment, as her father was a literature teacher and author of six books, she found great support from her family to make her dream come true. Everything seemed to be working out for Tess and she was getting closer to fulfilling her dream. However, a tragic event would prevent her from continuing. On December 11, 2019, around 7 p.m., Tess Majors was on her way to Barnard College. On her way, she would have to pass through a park called Morningside Park, which normally at the time she passed didn't have much movement. As soon as she was going down the stairs that gave access to the park, Tess was approached by three individuals who wanted to take her belongings. While one of them tried to immobilize her by grabbing her from behind the neck, the other two started to grab her things. The trio of criminals thought that due to Tess's appearance, she would be easy prey. However, the girl resisted and fought the criminals in an attempt to stop them from taking her belongings. It was then that one of them, who was armed with a white weapon, got angry and struck several blows to the young woman's chest and abdomen. Tess fell to the ground and the criminals took the opportunity to take her belongings and then run away. Even very injured, the young woman crawled down the steps of the stairs that gave access to the park and then walked to a corner where she was found by a security guard who was nearby. To the guard, Tess told what had happened and even described what the criminals were like. The guard immediately called an ambulance and the police who in a matter of minutes arrived on the scene. Tess was taken to the Mount Sinai Morningside Hospital. The medical team did their best to save her, but unfortunately, she couldn't resist her injuries and passed away a few minutes later. The doctor who attended her attested that the cause of death was due to a large hemorrhage caused by the blows of a plated weapon. One of these blows even reached the girl's heart. According to sources, before the crime against Tess, the police had already registered an increase in thefts inside Morningside Park. The perpetrators of these robberies were always described in the same way by the victims. Boys, aged between 12 and 14 years old, the same description that Taz had given to the guard. But strangely, although the police were aware of the increase in thefts in the park, they didn't pass this information on the local population, which obviously put people at risk, especially Barton College students who often cut corners to the park. It is likely that if Tess had access to this information, she would have avoided passing through the park at a time when people are less busy and could have been alive. Once they learned what had happened to their daughter, Tess's parents were devastated. Soon, the news about the crime had spread to the ears of all Barnard College students who were very sad and also very afraid. During an expertise carried out at the crime scene and surroundings, the police were able to locate a knife that was later confirmed to be the murder weapon. In addition, the police collected security camera footage and information from people who were close to the park at the time the crime occurred, and in a short time, they managed to reach one of the criminals who was involved. This is Zaire Davis, a boy who at the time was only 13 years old and was already known for committing petty crimes in his neighborhood. In a search carried out on his house, the police found the clothes he wore on the day of the crime, clothes that Tess had given the description to the guard who found her injured. What most helped the police to capture this boy was the fact that he was filmed by security cameras of an establishment that he broke into to steal, wearing the same clothes he had used days before in the crime against Taz Majors. That is, in addition to having a kind of special uniform for robberies, if we can say so, 
he was already committing another crime less than a week after helping to take the young woman's life. Zaire Davis was arrested and accused of participating in the crime that killed Tess Majors. His lawyers asked to release him claiming that he would be in the custody of his uncles and wouldn't leave the house, however, this request was denied. With Zaire Davis in hand, the police were able to identify the other two involved in the crime, as the boy handed them over during his statement. One of them is Luciano Lewis, a 14-year-old teenager at the time, who was also known for having committed several crimes in his neighborhood. The police were able to track and arrest him just one day after Zaire's arrest. The third person involved in the crime was Roshan Weaver, a 14-year-old teenager who was also known to have committed several crimes in his neighborhood. Despite knowing the identity of the third party involved, the police were unable to locate him, since when they went to his address more than once, the boy was never there. With that, Roshan was reported as a fugitive, until two weeks later, through an anonymous tip, the police located him at the home of a relative who was covering for him. This allegation came from a person who saw police abuse in the local media, asking anyone with information about Roshan Weaver to report it to the authorities. After Roshan's arrest, Zaire, the first criminal to be arrested, decided to tell the cops how it all happened. According to him, that night, he, along with Roshan and Luciano, would have gone to the park with the intention of robbing someone. They were walking around the place for some time, until they saw Tess, who for them, being a woman of short stature and thin body, would be an easy person to steal. The young woman even passed by them, but didn't notice them because there is little lighting in the park, and she was also distracted by using her cell phone. Still in his testimony, Zaire said that as soon as Tess passed them, they began to devise a plan to approach her. So, when the young woman reached the stairs of the park, Rashad went to her and kicked her in the back, believing that this would be enough to knock her down and then take her belongings. However, Tess didn't fall and even got into a physical fight with Rashawn, who needed the support of his friends to be able to dominate the girl. As his friends arrived, Rashawn grabbed the young woman by the back of the neck. Meanwhile, Zaire and Luciano began to take her belongings, but the young woman continued to resist and Rashawn was not able to hurt her alone. The criminal's main goal was to get the girl's iPhone, but she refused to hand it over. At one point, Tess managed to break free from Roshan and beat his hand, making him furious. The young woman screamed for help, but before anyone could appear to help her, Roshan pulled the bladed weapon that was with him and struck the girl several times. Due to her injuries, Tess went right there on the stairs and while she was on the ground, Zaire and Luciana took her iPhone and searched her for more belongings to steal. When they took everything they wanted, the trio of criminals fled, each one to one side because if someone had seen them and tried to catch them, at least one of them managed to escape. Despite Zaire Davis having confessed to the crime and given details of how it all happened, his accomplices, Roshan Weaver and Luciano Lewis, have pleaded not guilty. Thus, they refused any deal with the prosecution and as a consequence, they would be tried before the grand jury. The first to be brought to the trial was Roshan Weaver, on February 14, 2020. He was accused of several crimes including theft and taking the life of Tessa Majors. During his trial, various pieces of evidence were presented against him, such as the DNA that the experts found in the victim's fingernails that belonged to him, and also a recording of a call he made from prison to his father where he confessed the whole crime. Realizing that he could no longer continue to plead his innocence, Roshan Weaver decided to accept a plea deal with the prosecution and pleaded guilty to the crime against Tess Majors. On January 19, 2022, more than two years after the crime, Roshan Weaver was sentenced to life in prison. The second to be tried was Zaire Davis on June 3, 2020. He had already confessed to the entire crime and pleaded guilty in his statement to the police and also at his first hearing. During his trial, evidence was presented by his defense that proved that he hadn't touched the victims at the time of the crime. In addition, the court considered his young age as well as his clean record, giving him a sentence of only one year and six months in prison. Tess's parents were not at all happy with the sentence. They produced a statement saying that Zaire showed no remorse for the crime and although he was not one that took Tess's life, he had a direct hand in it all. On September 21, 2021, the trial of Luciano Lewis began, the only one of the trio of criminals who had not yet been tried. 
Luciano chose to make a deal with the prosecution and pleaded guilty to the crime. On October 14 of the same year, he received a 12-year prison sentence. According to sources, already in the first month he was detained in prison, Luciano got involved in fights with the other detainees and was also accused of making homemade weapons. Now, in addition to the conviction for the crime against test majors, he will also answer for these other crimes inside prison, which will likely increase his sentence. As a result of the crime, Morningside Park had taken new security measures. They added a 24-hour security booth in the park, extended parking security hours into the night until students left the nearby universities and installed new light bulbs for better lighting on the site. New York police issued a statement saying they were committing a patrol in the park more often and universities and schools around the park also said they would commit to provisioning some more security for their students, especially during the hours where the park is less busy. In addition to all of these measures, the New York City Council announced that it was raising funds to add more security cameras to the park that would help with real-time monitoring for the police. Later, the police stated that other people emerged after the arrest of the trio of criminals, stating that they were also victims of them, but I didn't find information if they would also answer for these previous crimes. The case of Tessa Majors was widely covered by the media and had a lot of repercussions at the time. It was even compared to other cases that also occurred in New York and under similar circumstances, such as the case of the Central Park Runner, which occurred in 1989. Despite all the investment in security in Morningside Park, in December 2021, an Italian student named Davide Geary was the victim of a crime similar to that of Tess Majors. At the time, Vincent Pinky, an ex-convict and member of a local gang, approached Davide from behind with a bladed weapon and without saying anything, landed a few blows. Vincent's intention was to make Davide fall to the ground so he could steal him. However, Davide, scared, ran off asking for help, but unfortunately, like Tess, he also couldn't resist the injuries and came to death. The criminal's entire action was caught on security cameras in the park and he was arrested shortly afterwards. At the time this crime occurred, the New York Times even published an article about what it called a strange surprise. According to sources, New York has seen a significant increase in crimes of a violent nature in recent years, and this has left the population afraid and cornered, especially those who live close to large urban centers. In the past, crimes of this nature happened from time to time, now they seem to happen more frequently. Many no longer feel safe in the beautiful parks that the city has, and when it gets dark, the parks are practically empty, something that was difficult to see in the past. Tessa Major's funeral and burial took place in her hometown, Charlottesville. The burial ceremony was private at a request of the family, and was attended by hundreds of guests, which included family, friends and college classmates of the young woman. The stairs in Morningside Park where the crime took place have become a kind of memorial, and people who are aware of the case usually leave flowers and say prayers so that Tessa Majors can rest in peace. Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes, and I see you next time.